in today's lesson, we're going to be solving polynomial inequalities. So to solve polynomial inequalities, what we had talked about earlier was graphing polynomials of higher order. I'll link that in the top right-hand corner if you need that lesson. But essentially what we're going to do to solve these polynomial inequalities is first we're going to go ahead and graph the polynomial, and then we'll use that graph to analyze the inequality. So to graph the following polynomial here, notice that the leading coefficient here will be x to the power of, we have a power of 2 from our exponent of 2 here, a power of 1 and a power of 1. So 2 plus 1 plus 1 will give us a power of 4, uh, plus there'll be a bunch of other terms here. But the main point is the leading coefficient is x to the power of 4. So therefore, when we examine the end behaviors, notice here we have roots at negative 4, negative 1, and 2. As x gets infinitely large, we can see here that our end behavior is uh, has a positive exponent, so our end behavior will tend towards positive infinity. As discussed here, at the root of 2, we're going to have a bounce. And at the other two roots, because the multiplicities on that, i.e. the powers on that, are odd, they will cross. So doing a quick sketch of our function, again, remind you we're starting up at positive infinity here. We're going to tend towards our root, bounce, cross, and cross. And we have a rough sketch of our polynomial of degree 4. Now what we want to do is go ahead and analyze the inequality, in which case here we're looking at where is the polynomial less than or equal to 0. Graphically, your polynomial is less than or equal to 0 when it's on the x-axis or below. So that'll be uh, this value right here I'm highlighting. Now you'll notice here the answer to this question would now be square bracket on the negative 4 because we're going to include that negative 4. And the reason for that is we have equality. So that's when it's at negative 4, the polynomial is 0. And that's going to continue on our number line until we hit negative 1. And then again, a square bracket at that negative 1 to signify that we're including the minus 1. And again, because of the equality at 0, uh, at minus 1, it's equal to 0. All right, let's take a look at another example. In the next example here, same idea. Uh, the leading coefficient here this time will be 2 uh, times x to the power of 3. So the leading coefficient here um, is going to be 2x cubed. Identify our roots. We have a root at negative 3, a root at 1, and a root at 5. And you'll notice here, as uh, x gets infinitely large, our polynomial will tend towards positive infinity. And because of the odd powers here, these are all powers of 1, we're going to be crossing every time we approach a root. So it'll tend towards the root of 5 and cross, 1 and cross, and minus 3 and cross. So this is a rough sketch of our polynomial. Now we're interested in, again, we're interested in when is a polynomial less than or equal to 0. So that's going to be until we hit the minus 3, and then between 1 and 5. Writing this in interval notation, we get negative infinity to negative 3 square bracket on the minus 3 because of the equality at 0. Union, uh, 1 to 5, again, square brackets. Um, just as a reminder here, if you forget set notation, I'll link uh, the lesson in the top right-hand corner if you need a refresher on that. Uh, but this would be our answer for our degree 3 polynomial. Uh, when is it less than or equal to 0? Let's take a look at another example. In the next example, same idea, you want to find that leading coefficient. In this case, the leading coefficient is negative 3, uh, x to the power of 4 this time. Um, let's go ahead and identify the roots of this. The roots of this will be uh, negative 4 and 3. If you examine the end behavior, as x is getting infinitely large, you can see that your polynomial will tend towards negative infinity. So you have an end behavior of negative infinity. So we're going to tend towards our root of 3. At a root of 3, we cross. At a root of negative 4, we also cross. Again, the, all, the powers on these, i.e. the multiplicities, are odd. Sketching our polynomial, we get. And now this is a little bit different than what we looked at last time. We want to know when is this strictly greater than 0. So now greater than 0 signifies above the x-axis. So we're interested in everything I'm highlighting here, but we're not including the roots. So your answer to this will be open bracket at the negative 4, all the way up until we hit the 3, open bracket again. And this would be the answer for where our degree 4 polynomial is above the x-axis. Let's take a look at another example. In the next example here, you'll notice we want to solve this polynomial inequality, but they have not factored this for us yet. So you have to do some bit of factoring here. Uh, here you might notice we have a difference of squares here. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1. We want to know when that is greater than or equal to 0. Or equivalently, we can do different squares a second time on the first term here. 
And then lastly, you're going to have your x squared plus 1. When is that greater than or equal to 0? So now we've gone ahead and factored our polynomial. And I can go ahead and graph it and then answer this inequality. The roots here are going to be 1, uh, negative 1, and 1. Uh, you'll notice here x squared plus 1 does not have any roots. Uh, this has only complex roots. Uh, you're not going to be able to find any real values such that this expression is equal to 0. So now let's go ahead and label uh, the roots if there's a cross or a bounce. You'll notice here because the powers on these roots are odd, we're going to cross. We already have this polynomial expanded out. We know the leading term is x to the power 4. It's positive. So the end behavior as x gets infinitely large is tending towards positive infinity. So a quick sketch of this will be a cross and a cross. And again, the end behaviors, always the end behaviors of even powered polynomials tend in the same direction. Either they both go to positive infinity, as you see here, or they both go to negative infinity. Now I want to know when is this strictly greater than or equal to zero. Highlighting the appropriate parts of our graph, we have the following. And again here, because we have the equality at zero, we're going to go from negative infinity until we hit negative one square bracket, union square bracket one to infinity. And now we have a quick example here of uh, when you have to, sometimes you have to factor first, as we did here, and then you go ahead and graph your polynomial and interpret the inequality. Let's take a look at another example. All right, that concludes today's lesson on solving polynomial inequalities. Thank you.